Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is a place where we make learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So control systems part two. You know, in the part one, we talk about the components of the control system, five of them, okay? Sensor, the input signal, afferent, then the control center, the output signal, or the efferent, then the effector. Now, there's another aspect of control system that I want to be looking at. And this has to do with the mechanism and the relationship between stimulus and response you know between stimulus and response is when you have all those components but now there's a relationship between them and there are two categories okay of mechanisms based on the relationship between stimulus and response the first one is called feed forward feed forward mechanism the other one is called feed backward but also we usually call it feedback not backward feedback mechanism it's going back okay so now as part of the relationship between stimulus and response this one okay the timing in this one occurs before the stimulus effects a change before then the feedback occurs after the stimulus has effected a change in whatever physiological variable they are dealing with now so this one, what happens, the goal of this one is it wants a faster performance, okay? Faster response, faster performance. So it anticipates a change and then begins to get ready to respond to it. So this one is anticipatory. Anticipatory. Why this one is reactionary? So the change has already occurred and it's now reacting to that change to correct it, to bring about balance. Why this one? The change has not even occurred. It's already responding. Now, we'll now paint a good picture. Let's now talk about this feed forward. Now, a good example of feed forward is when you see a plate of your favorite meal Mm? You love that meal so much because it's delicious to you. And you see it. And what happens? You begin to salivate. Your salivary glands, they begin to secrete saliva. Even in your stomach, they begin to secrete gastric juice, gastric secretions. Even in your intestine, they begin to secrete intestinal secretions and pancreas. The pancreas begin to secrete pancreatic juice. And those juice, they are there to help in the digestion of the food that you have not even taken. But it's already secreting it. You see that? So the response normally is when food enters your mouth and other parts of your digestive system, it secretes all those secretions that has a lot of enzymes that helps to digest the food and also it also the stomach also has smooth muscles that help to move the food from here down so but the food has not entered but it's already anticipating that the food is going to come so it starts becoming active secreting and contracting moving already so this is feed forward another example for example now an athlete wants to wrong on your mark 
set even before he starts running because he's already anticipating I'm going to use a lot of energy to run. The heart has already started beating fast. Okay? Because as you are using a lot of energy, blood needs to go faster to your muscles to supply them with resources that they need to contract and perform that work. So, but even before you embark on that race, your heart has already started beating faster and more powerfully. So it's anticipating and it's responding before the change. Right? So that's feed forward. Now we're going to be looking at feedback mechanism that responds after the change has occurred after this break. Right, welcome back. Now we're going to be looking at feedback mechanism. Of course, after there is a change, the stimulus has already made a change and it's now responding after that change. Now, feedback, the fact that, look at the two words, feedback. You know, sometimes you tell someone, give me feedback. You use that word a lot, give me feedback. That means you desire something, okay? And then you want that person to report to you. The person goes and gets information and does whatever and then comes back to you that desired that information. So it's about the output signal going back to where the change started from and effecting a correction, okay? So, but this feedback mechanism, it can go in two ways, okay? Based on how it influences the initial change. Now, this one we call positive positive feedback we'll explain it very simple another one is negative feed back now this is what happens in positive feedback now a change has occurred you know the change can either be taking some a variable higher than what it was or taking it lower than what it was. So higher, lower, it's referring to direction of change. Okay, direction of change. Now, positive feedback, the change, let's take for example, the change has occurred that took its particular physiological variable up. Now it goes through that process, the control center, then the control center gives a command normally you expect that it wants to take it bring it back to where it used to be which is the normal reference frame rather positive feedback will now effect a change that is towards the initial change the initial change is up so it goes and promotes that change so it takes it higher you understand and what it used to be then it senses it again it goes again and takes it higher so that's what positive feedback does it promotes change for example give a very good example i like to use it's called during the period of parturition which is also known as labor when the woman is in labor wants to give birth okay now the baby it's the head is towards this pelvic region this area so that head is impinging is touching a part of the female reproductive tract known as the cervix okay known as the cervix okay the cervix is something like this and this is the head of the baby 
touching press applying pressure on the cervix now this cervix has receptors that can sense this pressure that the head of the baby is applying okay so those receptors they are stretch receptors when it's applying pressure it's stretching it they are stretch receptors so the receptors will now send a message to a part of the brain okay that says i'm being stretched to so a stretch is occurring here and that part of the brain will now release a hormone which is a chemical this is a chemical uh, uh, means now releases a hormone called oxytocin oxytocin okay that oxytocin is now released into the bloodstream and it goes to the uterus the layman they call it womb okay we call it uterus so the uterus is where the baby stays okay it's composed of muscles that uterus you see it has a lot of smooth muscles so this oxytocin what it does is that it goes there and activates those muscles to contract so when the muscles contract they push the baby more to apply more pressure on the cervix you see the initial change was pressure here then the response now is even more pressure and then when it applies more pressure here it will send even a stronger signal which will release more oxytocin that will contract the uterus even more and apply more pressure so it's a cycle that we usually call vicious cycle most of the time it's very it can result in something very bad but this is one of the examples that it results in something good you see okay so this is the process when it continues to apply more stronger stronger force till the baby comes out and it stops okay so in order to stop this positive feedback from continuing like that because if it continues more it can lead to death can lead to something very terrible it usually has a cut off so in this part in this example when the baby is born it is cut off it now goes back, it stops, okay, has a cutoff point. So positive feedback promotes change, but the opposite is the negative feedback, which is far more common in nature. This positive feedback is not so common. There are other examples, but let's not we you're gonna see that in the books when you read the books. For example, my books, the examples are there. Now negative feedback. Negative feedback is that it the response is opposite of the initial change this is the more far 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 more common because this brings about more of homeostasis okay because this is when we are referring to that underlying principle that states that the body functions through multiple control systems that function in work in opposition to each other it's talking about negative feedback the response is working in opposition to the stimulus so the stimulus for example let's take blood pressure there is a change that has happened that has taken the blood pressure higher than what it used to be the control center interpre interprets it and said no this blood pressure needs to go back to normal then it responds through the effector and now orchestrate some changes that will make the blood pressure come down you understand so the negative feedback resists change unlike the positive feedback that promotes change so the initial direction of change is up blood pressure goes up then the response is taking it down you see it's opposite of the initial direction of the stimulus that's what negative feedback is all about so these are the two broad mechanisms and sub mechanism of feedback positive negative so this is how the body operates to help to maintain very stable suitable environment 
and normal functioning of the body. Alright, so see you in the next video.